Hi everyone, my name is Anya. And I'm Elizabeth. You've probably seen us all over campus, whether it be in the dining hall, watching a sports game, in our room, on the field, or anywhere else. We are a bit inseparable. However, we were not always this close. Our tumultuous relationship goes all the way back to kindergarten at Pike School. To be blunt, we hated each other, like a lot. To give you an idea of what I was like when I was younger, at my preschool, my teacher, Marilyn, asked my parents who is in charge of the Packard household. Both of them responded simultaneously with Elizabeth. You could say I was a bit bossy and temperamental. I had a similar encounter with my first grade teacher, Mrs. Jordan. During my parent-teacher conference, the one thing she told my parents I needed to work on was my leadership, which really just meant that I bossed everyone around in literally every activity, even if I didn't know what I was doing. I was in that class. Accurate description. As you can see, we had some similarities. These similarities did not bring us closer together, but rather much further apart. My first memory of Anya is from first grade. We had an author's tea party where our parents were invited to have some treats with us and celebrate the completion of our one page novels. Given my Scottish heritage, my family has a very large collection of tea sets. So I brought many extras to share with my classmates who did not have any. Most of the items had no sentimental value except for one handmade plate that my late great grandmother passed down to my mom. I made it very clear to my classmates that this one plate was off limits because I wanted it. Naturally, I took the plate. I was appalled. I don't remember the details, but I'm pretty sure this resulted in tears. Being the very high maintenance five-year-old that I was, the tea party was absolutely ruined. Revenge was my only option. Flash forward to second grade. We were playing tag and I was it. When I tagged Elizabeth, she was not happy. Next thing you know, she turned around, pushed me to the ground, accidentally, and then she started crying. Physical confrontation was not my thing, but my hatred towards Anya called for desperate measures that I regretted shortly after. After warping the story, the only punishment I received was sitting in the timeout chair for five minutes. Although physical confrontation wasn't Elizabeth's thing, I was far better equipped for it than she was. That became clear in fourth grade. I vividly remember standing in line in Miss McGowan's classroom right behind Anya. We were having a bit of a controversial discussion. Rather than working it out with words, Anya quickly turned around and stabbed me in the arm with her pencil. She's being dramatic. It was an accident, I swear. The scar only faded away a few years ago, but the damage was permanent, or so I thought. I'm not sure what changed for me, but by eighth grade, my hatred for Elizabeth had dissipated. Instead, I found her hilarious, especially because she straight up stopped caring. When teachers would ask her questions, she would respond sarcastically. I would always laugh with my best friend, and I thought Elizabeth and I just worked it out. I was sure we were finally on good terms. We definitely did not work it out. I spent my whole eighth grade year trying to understand Anya's laughter, as I couldn't tell if she was laughing at me or actually found me funny. Throughout the whole secondary school application process, everyone knew Elizabeth was bound for Brooks. I, on the other hand, was convinced I was attending Govs. Then Brooks Revisit Day happened, and I fell in love with this school and community. Although I was nervous about making new friends in high school, I knew I had companionship in Elizabeth. She did not. 
So when we were assigned our freshman year classes in August of 2017, I quickly posted screenshots on my Snapchat story, hoping Elizabeth and I were in some of the same classes. Her sense of humor throughout eighth grade made me so excited to see what the future held. On the other hand, Anya's Snapchat story triggered, triggered a mental breakdown for me. We were in a full three classes together when I had been hoping we wouldn't have any overlap. I remember bawling to my mom about how I would never be able to escape her and how it felt like the universe was out to get me. I thought my high school experience had been ruined before it even started. As an awkward 14-year-old, only days before beginning freshman year, I posted a Snapchat on my story where I would answer questions about any person who replied. One of the questions was, have I ever hated you? When Elizabeth swiped up on my story, I responded with a resounding yes. However, I had moved on from that part of my life. Elizabeth pretended that she had to. We still have our extremely cringy conversation after Anya sent me her answers to the questions, so we're going to reenact the conversation today. I responded with, the have I ever hated you is a yes, lol. I remember hating you too. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. LOL, it's so funny that I used to hate you. BC, I love you, SM now, LOL. Can't wait to see you. Love you too, BB. I'm so excited. Me too. I'm kind of nervous about making friends, but hopefully it should be fine. OMG, same. I'm freaking out about that, but I'm sure it will all be fine. Yeah, we will be okay. I can't wait to see you though. Me too. And scene. To be clear, there were many emojis exchanged throughout the conversation. Even though my initial definition of fine had nothing to do with Anya, my perception of the word changed very quickly. Although I tried my best to avoid her and trash talk her to all of my new friends, which goes to show what high character I had at 14 years old, our lighthearted conversations between classes somehow flowed very easily. What started out as walks to and from classes turned into me going to her house after class to change, and then before dances, and then for every overlapping free. We began to spend hours together daily, and we never, ever ran out of things to say. Neither of us has any idea as to what changed, but it's very clear to both of us that the gradual release of our grudges resulted in friendship. Over my past four years at Brooks, I have spent more time with Elizabeth than without her. Every morning freshman year, I would meet Elizabeth outside her house on the walk from the dining hall to our first period class, even when we were not going to the same classroom. Every time I could successfully convince my dad to stop at Duncan, he instinctively got her a drink as well, a medium iced coffee with almond milk. She quickly became an integral part of my family. Sophomore year, I tried to transfer out of Brooks. Elizabeth never failed to listen as I tried to navigate friendships, relationships, family, school, and mental health all at once. She never once judged me, even when she disagreed. I wanted to go to North Andover High, but quickly realized that leaving Brooks also meant leaving Elizabeth. That wasn't something I was willing to give up. Although she was the reason I stayed back then, I know now I could not have made a better decision. I owe every part of my character to Brooks and the experiences I have had over the past four years. By this point in my sophomore year, her parents were as used to seeing me as their own daughter, as I was in Elizabeth's room at least three times a day. Junior year went by in a blur, as we attended everything together and were practically joint at the hip. Then COVID hit. Although I hate to admit it, 
I am really bad at staying in touch with people. You can ask my friends. Except something was different with Elizabeth. We spent probably 10 to 12 hours on FaceTime every single day and never got bored. Even if we were silently doing other things, having her there was always the highlight of my day. She knows my every thought, my every fear, and my every secret. Summer went by and senior year began, except differently, because instead of picking her up by her house every morning, she was now 10 feet away from me in our room. Elizabeth is my person. She is the most empathetic, kind, hardworking, passionate, loving, and smart human being that I know. She is someone I can be alone with, someone who will dance with me until 3 a.m., and someone who makes me cry from laughter at least once a day. She is where I have the most fun. Without her, I wouldn't be here right now making a chapel speech. And without Brooks, I never would have found her or the very best version of myself. At the beginning of my Brooks career, I was very uptight, a perfectionist, and constantly thinking about how to become something other than simply being the head of school's daughter. I was unsure of myself, always anxious, felt very alone at times, and was constantly trying to prove myself to everyone around me. Anya has helped me learn how to stop overthinking things, to be the person I want to be rather than the person I feel as though I should be, to prioritize others while still thinking about myself, and to have the confidence to be myself even when I feel awkward. Although I don't always tell her this, her kindness, selflessness, passion, lightheartedness, intelligence, openness, determination, warmth, and empathy are palpable in any room she enters, any table she sits down at, or any group she is a part of. Anya is the person I cry to on my least favorite day of the week, Sundays, the person I binge watch Harry Potter with, the person who I have dance parties in our room with, the person I used to eat frozen mango chucks, chunks in my kitchen with, the person who encourages me to do cartwheels in Main Street, the person who doesn't kick me out of our room when I climb into her bed at 5 a.m., the person I FaceTime for a minimum of five hours a day when we are apart, the person who laughs with me at all of my awkward interactions, and the person who does anything and everything in between with me. She is my person, and I feel so lucky that my 14-year-old mind was able to see that. Over the past four years, we were able to grow together, learn from each other, and support one another at our highest highs and our lowest lows, even when our emotions were opposite with one another. I am so glad that she was able to tolerate my very high maintenance self freshman year and that she still is somehow able to understand what I'm saying, even when I speak fragmented nonsense. Brooks is what brought us together. And the best part about this school is that friendships as close as ours are the norm and not the outlier. These past four years at Brooks, I learned what true friendships look like, how to be my best self, and what it feels like to be a part of a community that gives back even more than what you put in. This is a special place where enemies become friends, teachers become mentors, and a community becomes a family. I hated her. I really, really did. And without a doubt, she hated me. But as we quickly learned throughout high school, holding on to grudges only limited us. We are both incredibly stubborn and feel things passionately. However, pettiness and drama were the only things holding us back. Now, if we encounter a conflict with friends, or anyone for that matter, we try our best to let it go and move on. We don't do the grudge thing anymore. People make mistakes, but they also learn from them and can change. We are living proof of that. Although I wish we had managed to get over our hatred earlier in our lives so we could have spent more time together, these past four years have been more than enough time 
to solidify our friendship, which we know will last a lifetime. So thank you, Brooks, for bringing us together and for teaching us that the people you thought you hated can end up being your best friends. This is a community we are very sad to leave, but one that we know we will be a part of forever. To everyone who has crossed mine or Elizabeth's paths, we are so grateful for your presence and would not be who we are today without you. The 441.8 miles between Boston University and Georgetown will have nothing on us next year. Thank you.